7th graders, welcome to your third lesson of chapter 2. Like I told you, I'm going to try to make this lesson fast since we've already previewed this in class and you guys did awesome today. So, chapter 2, lesson 3 is called the percent proportion. Our objective is actually to solve problems involving percents by using the percent proportion. And that's what we use today. The standard we're going to be addressing, 7th grade ratios and proportions, standard number 3. Let's go ahead and write down the percent proportion as we solve some problems. And that's what we're going to do today. And let's get going. All right, in our first example, we're going to be solving the problem, what percent of $15 is $9? And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with our percent proportion equation. The percent proportion equation, we start with a fraction equals a fraction. Reminder that the word part goes on top and the word whole goes on bottom. And anytime we have a percent, it goes on the top right and it always goes over 100. Now, there's key words that tells us where each part goes. If you see the word is, that typically means that that is the part. If you see the word of, that typically means that is the whole. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to set up one of these percent proportions and solve that to figure out what the percent is that we're missing. So in this case, we're going to read this question that says, what percent of $15, so it says of, that tells me that 15 is the whole, is $9. And it says is, that tells me it's the part. So I have $9 out of 15 equals, well, what percent over 100? And we don't know the percent, so this is where we're actually going to um, put a variable in that spot. I'm going to use the letter A for my variable in these problems, and that should be, make it a little bit easier to kind of solve these problems if just using the variable A. You can use any variable you want from A to Z or anything in between, but this is what we're going to do. After we have it set up, we learned today that we're just going to cross multiply 9 times 100, that's 900, and A times 15, that's 15A. After we cross multiply, we go ahead and we divide. So we're going to divide by 15 on one side, divide by 15 on the other, and we get the variable A is equal to 900, divide by 15, 60. So if you had $9 out of $15 that you need to buy something, you have 60% of the amount that you need. That's our answer to question number one. Let's keep moving. In example number two, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to look at something that is missing the part. So in the first example, we were missing our percent. Now we're going to look at another one that we can write the percent proportion and solve to figure out the missing part. So in this case, we're going to start with a blank equals blank. Hopefully you had the piece from the percent proportion that tells us where everything goes. It says what number is. So it does not tell us the is. So in the is spot, we can put a variable. I'm going to use B for that variable. But it says 40%. So I'm going to put my percent over here. And since I know it's a percent, percents are always out of 100. So I can actually go ahead and fill in that spot. Now, it says of 120. Since it said the word of, that means it's talking about the whole. So this is my setup to solving this problem. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and go through the process of solving this. Um, so what we do is we cross multiply. We have B times 100. That's 100B equals 40 times 120. That equals 4,800. And always remember that after you cross multiply, you're always going to divide by the number, not the variable, but the number that's with the variable. So we're going to divide by 100, divide by 100, this cancels out, and we get B equals 4,800 divided by 100, zeros at the end, I can cancel those out. So I'm really looking at 48 divided by 1, that's 48. So B equals 48. What that means is if I had 48 out of 120, I have 40% of 100% of that amount. So that's our answer to question number two. Let's do one more and we're done. All right, for our final example, we're going to be finding the other piece that we haven't looked for. So in the first example, we found the percent. Second example, we found the part. And now our third example, using the percent equation, 
we're going to find the whole. So we start by putting a fraction equals a fraction. And now we fill out all the spaces in between. 18 is, since it uses the word is, I know it's the part. 25%, since it has a percent, that goes where the percents go. And all percents are out of 100, which means that I'm only missing one piece. I'm missing this piece right here. And let's see, it says of what number? They didn't tell us the number of, but that's the piece we're going to figure out. So since they didn't tell us what of we're finding, we're going to go ahead, cross multiply, and divide, and solve that problem. So we're going to put a variable here. I'm going to use C since I went A, B, now I'm going C. 18 times 100 is 1,800. 25 times C, that's 25C. And now if I want to solve for the variable C, we're going to divide by the number that's with the variable. So divide by 25, divide by 25. This cancels out, and we get C equals 1,800. Divide by 25, 72 is our answer. So if you had 18 out of 72 questions correct, you would have a 25% out of 100. So 18 out of 72, 25% out of 100. And that's it for today's lesson. Hopefully you guys liked this video. I know that we looked at it in class a little bit today, and it seemed like you guys were getting it. So I just want to make everything come on home, and we're done for today. Um, like this video. Hopefully you really like the fact that it's short. And I will see you tomorrow.